The advent of fabric printing on demand is a game changer for reenactors, film and theater, costume and set designers, museums and cosplayers. We'll be looking specifically at digitally recreating historic textiles from photos of extant artifacts and designing new fabrics that likely existed but have no extant artifact to work from. There will be no technical instruction in this video. No experience with photo editing programs is required. This is merely to show some of the vast potential of the medium and to encourage the viewer to imagine how they might make use of it for themselves using Photoshop or working with a designer. Services such as Spoonflower in Durham, North Carolina allow the user to upload graphics and order printed yardage. There are also weaving services that mostly do heavier fabrics and tapestries. The potential for resurrecting old textiles is practically limitless. This small fragment has been reconstructed and tinted. Rather than drawing the motif to produce the graphic, the image of the fragment has had color restored and the phoenix is reconstructed, preserving the feel of the original. Using a high resolution photograph of an extant piece in Photoshop, we can restore or change the color of an ancient textile, leaving the original character of the weave intact. Everything can be tinted according to whim or to history. Losses can then be filled in. Repeats can be created. Most of the textiles found on these sites are repeats of motifs, however, we're not limited to this. Reproductions on a larger scale are possible. Here is a more extreme example of the potential of this medium. It is a replica of an Ottoman tent. It would take many people months to recreate as the originals were applique. The ceiling is a separate layer, engineered in Photoshop to be printed as yardage and pieced together. The walls were printed on large panels for an uninterrupted image. Extra panels were printed for room dividing curtains. Traditional Ottoman cushion covers are printed on velvet for the decor. There are services that print on waterproof canvas, but this is built on a waterproof canopy. The ceiling is continuous yardage of cotton, with the various elements patched together. The walls were printed on fabric shower curtains, and so are water repellent. Shower curtains worked best for this to avoid a seam interrupting the panel. Borders and other ornaments were created to decorate the simpler outside. You can see that using light and shadow, textures can be faked to fool the eye, in some cases well enough that the observer must touch the fabric to be sure. Weaving can be imitated. Stamps or embroidery. This banner was created by reconfiguring a rug for the background, reducing the center field to shades of blue and applying the textures of embroidery to a calligraphy. And here, the Sultan's signature rendered in a fake embroidery for a Janissary band. Much work can be saved by printing ornament directly onto the background fabric, as with these tunics printed with imitation embroidery cloud collars. I started with a design plate from Timurid, Persia, applied an embroidery stitch texture and a bit of light and shadow to make it look slightly raised, it was then uploaded to Spoonflower to be printed on three yards of satin. Since the complicated collar is directly printed onto the background fabric, the effort of sewing it onto the garment is avoided. This Syrian style dress was drawn entirely from scratch in Photoshop, engineered to be cut out with all the decorations already in place. Texture and light and shadow give the illusion of embroidery. Here is a 15th century Mamluk textile fragment. It's damaged, faded, it's discolored. We don't know the original color, but Photoshop can give us some pretty good clues. It looks like it might have been a green or a blue or somewhere in between. But if we select one of the less damaged areas and apply the average blur filter, we get a blend of this area. We can then go to the color selector and sample that blended color. Now we see that it is a desaturated green, actually a pretty pure green. Cameras and monitors will all see things a little differently, but this is the best solution I can offer for guessing the original color. 
We can then pick a more saturated version of the screen and try it out. If we think it is a little bright, we can back off and try again until we get it right. The Safavid banner from the collection of the Metropolitan Museum is definitely beyond my skill level to reproduce by hand, but now it flies again by the wonders of Photoshop and Spoonflower. Now one of the drawbacks of these printing services is that they don't do metallics, but with the right coloring and printing on a shinier material like satin, it can appear rather like gold. You also have the option of adding gold embroidery to really make it pop. Another drawback of printed fabrics is that it only prints on one side. Some of the thinner fabrics can show through nicely on display. But since I wanted the shiny satin, I made a reverse image to back it with. Then the calligraphy reads properly, and light shining through does not create bad shadows. The velvet that Spoonflower offers is a wonderful opportunity for some creative applications. This repeating fabric taken from an extant velvet was made into a pillow cover. It is soft enough to sleep against and can be thrown into the washing machine. Pillows can also be non-repeating fabrics like this ottoman velvet cushion cover. The ottomans also had velvet bow cases and quivers, usually embroidered. This one has been digitally recreated, then engineered to print on one yard of velvet to be cut out and sewn onto a leather back. There was a little space left over on the yard, so I configured the bottom half of the quiver to create a matching pouch. In addition to fabric, Spoonflower also prints on wallpapers. This opens up even more potential uses for digital design, especially for faux surfaces, maybe a painted ceiling or walls. Here we see a set of seven Seljuk tiles with heavy damage, apparently from being roughly pried from the walls. They've been digitally restored and printed on wallpaper, attached to a surface, and lacquered to give a shinier appearance to mimic real tiles. The same techniques used to restore images of tiles can be used on other items, especially plates, ceramic or melamine. These print-on-demand services offer many different items, but I find that plates are most useful and easiest to engineer. Plates and bowls are also one of the richest sources of extant objects. One use of this technology that does not require expert Photoshop skills is for embroidery. You can print your patterns right on the right colored fabric. You could print a photo of a kokoshnik at the right size, then add pearls and embroidery. I hope I have given you a good idea of some of the potential of this technology and that you will find uses for it in your crafts. Thanks for watching.